Hi everyone, Jess here, and today I'm joined with Eddie Wilson, CEO of Ryanair DAC. Good morning. Thank you so much for making the time to speak with me. So with Ryanair achieving all-time traffic records, what's going to be your primary focus as we look to 2024? We're going to uh, continue to grow. Um, we have some minor delays with, uh, with Boeing for this winter, but overall we take another 57 aircraft for next summer. Um, and we're already allocating those and there is such demand out there from airports that haven't actually recovered yet. I estimate there's about a 20% uh, shortfall in capacity in Europe and that is manifesting itself in airports saying, Ryanair, please come and, uh, and fly from our airport. Fantastic. And how has your digital transformation enabled the airline to cope with these larger volumes of passengers and how are you going to use this to elevate the travel experience moving forwards? I'd nearly argue that our growth at the moment wouldn't have been possible by what we've achieved on digital. Um, you know, we learned a lot during COVID as well as to how we were going to deal with the sort of volumes that we've been growing with, um, particularly on the customer service side, um, also on the day of travel app in keeping people informed, I think are sort of game changers for us because you just can't do that with people anymore. The, we just can't scale up to that. But I think what's really important is an organization like Ryanair has a Ryanair Labs function in-house, which has got about 700 people. And I think any organization that doesn't have its own in-house innovation center with all the changes that are coming is really going to be a step behind everywhere else. And we can just see this continuous innovation, uh, which hopefully I'm driving as well, you know? Uh, and uh, it has been fantastic about what we've done on the scheduled revenue side, ancillary revenue, but more importantly, how we supported the operation in terms of resilience this summer. And, you know, touch wood, we have been better than anyone else. You know, the fewest cancellations, the most resilient, because I think we have the software uh, to support our people at the front line. Fantastic. And picking up on ancillary revenue, what do you think the future landscape is going to look like? Are there any disruptive forces coming up that you're keeping your eye on? You're always looking. Um, I mean, there's always innovation out there, and we've we've tried an awful lot over the years. But the core ancillaries for us seem to be still the ones that are associated with travel, whether that's giving more choice to our passengers and what seats they want to have, getting on board first, and they are the ones that is, you know, is an integral part of the decision to buy a fare. Um, I think just presenting things as a window shop. Um, is not something that gets the traction that people think that you can sell mortgages online just because you've got so many million views or whatever those products are. So I think there'll be more connectivity on board because I think pr access prices are falling. Um, I think there'll be more opportunities for, um, for advertising because a day of travel app there within airlines, you know, people are hungry for information and that interaction I think will, 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 will draw that. But that's why we're here today to see what uh, innovation is happening at the uh, at this at this conference to see can we leverage any of that. And another huge theme of the conference, of course, is sustainability. Mm. And last year when we spoke together, you said that sustainable aviation fuel is going to be the key. Yeah. If but provided we can iron out problems with feedstock, are you still thinking this is the case, or are you seeing hydrogen and other tech coming in? I think there is still an element of um, you know governments want to be popular. Um, and they want to just announce mandates for, for uh, fuel, in other words, what you should take on board. Um, but behind the scenes, I mean, like what I was saying last year is now being replicated in the UK where um, you look at what the government are doing and saying, look, there are a lot of costs associated with this and you've got to join it all up. Look what happened with ULEZ in London. It's all right to say things about it, but what does it actually mean? And that doesn't mean that we're shirking away from it. We are shouting from the rooftops to government to say, you need to incentivize the fuel companies so that we've got the feedstocks, so that we've got the, so that we can fulfill those and get to net zero by 2050. And, you know, it's so important because aviation, you know, safety critical uh, business, you just can't make it up, you know? You've got to, you've got to do these things right. You've got to have the supply chains ready. And I think we're making good progress but I don't think it's quick, I don't think it's, um, uh, it's fast enough. Got to incentivize the fuel companies, get it there so we have more of it, drive prices down, because the last thing we want is to go all that way with sustainable aviation fuel and for it to push up prices even further. 
So uh, Willie Walsh touched on this yesterday as well um, at the conference. But um, I think there's some real reality coming into where the sustainable aviation fuel is going to be sourced. So my follow up to that would be, do you think there's going to be a period where it's the customer footing the bill for this transition or? I think it's inevitable um, uh, in terms of, I don't think you're going to get to the sweet spot of the fall in sustainable aviation fuel to what it is from fossil fuels. So I think there will be a period and we can see that capacity is being constrained post COVID. And I think, you know, prices will rise as equilibrium comes into the market over the next number of years. And I think that's inevitable. Um, and that should that will be reflected in in higher fares but because from Ryanair's point of view is the largest airline in Europe because we leverage costs so much not just on hedging fuel but when we buy our aircraft how productive our people are the, the deals we do at airports for volume we will still be the lowest cost operator so no matter what the fare levels are we will be the ones with the lowest fares and I think people will gradually migrate to us if pricing if there's upward pressure on pricing. Fantastic. Well, thank you for taking the time to share your insights today. Thank you. Today. Thanks a lot. Lovely. Thank you.